Hello, welcome to the Butterflies Through Time Drawing Workshops. My name's Eleanor Cheney and I am a professional artist. I've been working as an artist for 15 years, but actually I've probably been an artist since I was your age because I've always loved drawing. So even if drawing isn't your favourite thing, I hope today we're going to do some really fun activities, you're going to learn something new and you're going to end the session with something that you're really proud of. In my own artwork, I'm inspired by the natural world. So that's the nature near my house, like my local park, or going for walks in the woods or along the beach. I also collect natural history books and I call it my tiny library. Some of the books in my collection are over a hundred years old. I love looking at the illustrations. So those are the drawings that are made by other artists. And I like reading the books to learn about how wildlife has changed in the last hundred years which is actually a lot like the Butterflies Through Time project at the Museum of Zoology. I make lots of different types of art, so one of those is that I make paper cuts. It's where I cut out a picture from paper using a very sharp knife called a scalpel. And a lot of these look like the covers of the books in my library. Another way I make art is I draw animals and plants using a pencil or a pen, or maybe my tablet, you might have some of those at school. And the things I like to draw, my subject matter, often include butterflies, moths, beetles, sea creatures, and all sorts of animals from around the world. In these videos, I'm going to show you how I would draw a butterfly, and I'm going to include all of the things I've learned over the years that will make this easier for you to do. We're also going to draw parts of the butterfly life cycle, so caterpillars and chrysalises, and even some of the leaves of the plants that they rely on to survive. We're going to be looking at what the living butterflies look like, how they fly, how they breed, and we're going to take inspiration from some of the specimens in the museum. So let's get started. Hello, now we're going to draw our butterflies. So in these videos, I'm going to be drawing a peacock butterfly, which is a really common butterfly species you might see if you live in the city or in the countryside. We've chosen a few different species to focus on in this project, some of which are quite common and others that you might recognise. So these include the peacock, the red admiral, the brimstone, the meadow brown and the speckled wood. Others are much rarer and more difficult to find and some no longer live in the Cambridgeshire area. So these are the swallowtail, the large blue, the purple emperor and the large copper. I'm going to show you how I would draw a peacock butterfly and then you're going to apply the same techniques to the butterflies that you've been given to draw. So first I need to think about the materials I need today. So you're going to be using the printed template guide to support you as you draw. You'll have one for your species of butterfly. A pencil. You can use a normal HB pencil, like the one you write with or draw with at school, but it's good if it's sharp because it helps us to do lighter lines. A rubber, just in case you want to change anything. A set of colouring pencils, because we're going to colour these in with pencil at the end. And a pair of scissors, which we're going to need to cut out our butterfly. There are all sorts of ways to draw. So some people prefer to do big, expressive drawings. Some people like to do quick drawings with loads of energy in the lines. And some people like me are most comfortable doing drawings that use tiny lines and lots of detail. None of these is wrong and none is better than the other. It's a wonderful thing about art that there are just so many different ways to create. And as you try them out, you're going to find what works best for you. So, this will help you to learn what you enjoy and to learn how to draw in your own style. So one day you'll have a style which is the way that you as an individual make art. We're going to be making observational drawings today inspired by scientific illustrations. So observational drawings are drawings that are made by closely looking at the subject, that's the thing you're drawing, and trying to capture all of the features of that animal. In my own art, I try and make things look as realistic, as much like the real thing as possible. However, there are loads of examples of artists who have illustrated animals 
and they've captured all of those details and they haven't made realistic drawings. So Charlie Harper made very stylized images or Steve Jenkins and Eric Carle who worked with paper collage. The really important thing is just not to worry about the other drawings around you. Look at the images we're using for inspiration and maybe follow some of my suggestions to help you learn new skills. But at the end, I really want you to just celebrate that this artwork is yours and only you could have made it. So on that note, to warm us up, let's each take a piece of paper and draw a butterfly just as we imagine it in our heads. So you don't need to think about how does it look? Is it the right butterfly? It's just a, a little warm up activity for us to draw what we think a butterfly looks like. And what this is going to be is a reminder for us at the end. There are all sorts of different ways of drawing and they're all just as good as the other. They're just slightly different. So now we've done a butterfly and everybody has their own very unique and original butterfly. Let's experiment with drawing one in my style. So the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to look at the picture of the peacock butterfly. So that's what, this is called my reference image, it's the image I'm looking at while I'm drawing. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the shape of the body and I can see it's made of three parts, the head, the thorax and the abdomen. Another thing that I'm noticing is that there are these very furry hairs on it. Butterflies have all these long hairs on their body. So if I draw a box around my reference image, this can also help me to see how big my body of the butterfly is in comparison to its wings. You can see on the box there's two lines. So there's the line that goes down the center. That's the center symmetry line. And then there's another line that goes across the middle and that's the second symmetry line because butterflies, as we know, are symmetrical. I'm thinking about how far away the head is from the top of the rectangle. And those top corners of the rectangle and bottom corners, those are going to be where my wings end. You can see on your own reference image where the wings touch the box. So I'm going to sketch in very, very lightly. I always draw very lightly and then I do harder lines when I'm more confident. I'm going to sketch in the head, the thorax and the abdomen. Now I'm going to look about at where the wings go. So I can see that in my picture, the top wings, called the four wings, are going to end at the top of the rectangle. I might even want to draw over my reference image to see what that main shape is. Is it like a uh, a triangle? Are there curves in it? Are there straight lines? I can see that it's a scalene triangle because none of the sizes, uh, lengths are the same size. And I'm going to sketch this in very, very lightly to give me that main wing shape. So I'm going to do one side and then the other. And that helps me to keep the symmetry. Now I'm going to look closely at the wing edges and I'm going to sketch in where there are curves or dips or points to make those really beautiful shapes that we see at the edge of butterfly wings. When I'm happy with this, I can do the same process again with the bottom wings, which we call the hind wings. I'm also going to draw in the antenna. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in the veins on the butterfly wings. These are the lines that you see kind of going across the wings and connecting them to the body. And I'm also going to sketch in very lightly the patterns on the wings. So I'm putting in the circles, the shapes that where it's black or where it's red or it's purple. But when I'm happy with my sketch lines and I feel more confident, I'm going to go over them again with my pencil and I'm going to press a bit harder. I might even get my rubber and start rubbing out some of those extra lines, those sketch lines I don't need anymore. I could also start adding smaller details. So you might use hatching, which is where you do lots of lines. Cross hatching, where you do lines going one way and then lines going another way over the top. 
or stippling, which is lots of dots. And I can use them to add shadow and also to add things like details, like hairs. Don't add too much detail though, because we're going to be colouring these in and then a lot of your tiny details will get lost. So especially on the darker areas where there's going to be black or dark brown, you're not going to be able to see all of your beautiful pencil lines. When you're happy, you can cut your butterfly drawing out. It's best to cut roughly around your shape first. So cut off all that extra paper that you don't need and it will make it easier to get your scissors and then you can get them in and cut out the details. Hello, and now we're going to do our colouring in. So when I start colouring in, the first thing I do is I look at my reference image. And I'm going to look at the lightest parts of that butterfly. So the yellows and the light blues and the greys. Because when I colour in, I always want to start with the lightest colours first. So I go from light to dark. I start colouring in very, very light colours. And then I start doing darker colours over the top. So I'm just going to do light blue and then I'm going to merge that with a little bit of my pencil, my drawing pencil to make a grey shade. When I'm happy with the way that looks, I'm going to go on and I'm going to do the blue parts of the peacock butterfly. So they've got these really beautiful bluey purpley eye spots. I'm going to colour those in on both the top wings, the fore wings and the bottom wings, which we call the hind wings. So I'm going to colour those in with two shades of blue. So I've got like a light blue and a darker blue and I've also used a purple. After that, I'm going to move on to colour in all the bits that are yellow. And I'm going to blend, that's when you do one colour lightly over the top of the other to make a slightly different colour. So I'm going to blend those colours together with an orange and yellow to try and get all the different shades in my butterfly. Then I go on to colour in the body using two different browns, but you can just use one brown and press a little bit harder to make darker brown colours. Trying to get all that fuzziness. I'm trying to get that feeling of the furry body. And once I'm happy with that, my next step is to add the red. So I coloured in all of the different red bits doing one side and then I did a little bit on the other side. So I kept my butterfly symmetrical and I could make sure I was colouring in the right bits because the wing patterns can be a little bit complicated. over again with a darker red pencil pressing a bit harder to try and get those vein lines. So I did some shading with a black pencil. So I used a black colouring pencil on all of the bits that are going to be black. I also added some details. Then when I'd coloured in one side, I turned my butterfly over and I looked at the reference image and how the wings on the underwing are mostly brown. They look like old leaves for camouflage. So I coloured them in using different layers of brown, just going over them again and again to get different shades. And then, as you can see, my butterfly was finished. So on one side I had the bright red of the peacock butterfly, but when you fold it over, underneath you can see the underwing pattern, 